So if we take a look at the Boss RC505, as you can see, all the tracks are fully occupied with the red lights. Now, when I click the program change clip in Ableton Live, it will change to a brand new patch. And as you can see, all of the lights have successfully turned on and we're now on to the next track. Hey, what's up? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, I'm Ben Rollins and this channel's all about live loop upload loop, three videos just like this one every single week. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do a program MIDI change on the Boss RC505. So I'm currently building a brand new Ableton live set for a show I have got coming up at a festival in February. Now I'm refining my whole set and currently one problem I have in a live show is I play one track, I finish the song and then I scroll through this list until I get to the next song and, and sometimes I over scroll because I'm excited on stage and I'm shaking or whatever. So it's not exactly practical and it means the changeover between tracks can be quite long sometimes. So I wanted to make it where in Ableton Live, I just click one button and everything changes on my entire rig, including my Kemper Profiler patch, my Nord patch, my RC505 patch, etc. I think you get the point. So in the manual, there's no details on how to do a program change on the Boss RC505 and it took a bit of playing about for me to actually figure out how to do it. So I'm gonna break it down for you in today's episode. So I've got this little cheap MIDI to USB cable that I got off Amazon. Link down below, it's about four quid, something like that. So basically, the dead weird these cables, even though they're labeled in and out, they actually do the other way around. So when you come to plug it into the loop pedal, you plug the out into the in and the in into the out. And don't ask me why, it's just all of them seem to be like this and it drives me crazy. So we're gonna take our MIDI out end and we're gonna plug it into the MIDI in end like so. Now we've got that plugged in, we're then just gonna plug the USB end into our laptop and then we'll select the device in Ableton Live. So now that we've plugged our cable into the back of our RC505 and the USB into our laptop, we're gonna create a brand new MIDI track within Ableton Live. Now, if we head over to the preferences section first before we proceed any further, we need to make sure the USB cable we've just plugged in is selected correctly in Ableton Live. So the one we've plugged in is this one here, it's called USB MIDI interface and there's also an output USB MIDI interface. Now I just suggest turning everything on so it definitely works and, and you haven't messed something up because these cheap USB cables are kind of a bit temperamental and have their own, uh, own mind of their own. So just turn everything to on and then we're gonna head over to our new MIDI track. Now here we're gonna select the MIDI ins, we're gonna turn this to no input. So the MIDI from is gonna be no input, but the MIDI to, we're gonna to select to our USB MIDI interface or whatever your USB cable is called. So we're gonna check what MIDI channel we're on. So if we look onto our Boss RC505, so if we scroll through the system settings menu until we see MIDI RX channel. So this MIDI RX channel is the receive channel for the Boss RC505. So we have channels one through to 16, like all instances in MIDI. So if you want to plug in multiple MIDI devices into the Boss RC505, it is possible. So for example, if you want to do MIDI program changes via this cable, but then also use a MIDI foot controller like I do, I believe using a MIDI splitter cable will work. Now currently I haven't tested this because it is in the post on the way to me, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work as long as all the devices are running on the same MIDI channel. So now if we head back into Ableton Live, we're gonna double click and create a new blank MIDI clip. Now we're gonna head over here to where program changes. So we're gonna switch loop off and we're gonna leave it just on trigger. If we turn quantization to off as well, so it's instant when we click it, which is obviously what we want. Now down in the program change section, you have to make sure you have bank one selected. Now I don't entirely sure know why it needs to be on bank one, but if you don't have it on a bank, 
for some reason, Ableton Live starts triggering the loop pedal as if it's like MIDI CC notes, which is a little bit strange. So we're gonna set it to bank one, and then in the programs menu, this is whatever patch number you wanna to change to. So for example, I'm currently on patch 13, but I want to change to number 15, which will take me over to Living After Midnight by Judas Priest. And then if I click this, as you can see, it's changed my loop pedal over to that other track. Now you just create as many clips as you want in conjunction with the tracks and then trigger them accordingly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving me a like and a subscribe. My channel's all about live loop and upload live loop tutorials, live loop performances every Tuesday, Thursday, and now Saturdays. I've been Ben Rowland. You can find me online at benrowlandsmusic.com. If you want to learn more about live looping, check out this video here, and I'll see you in the next one.